So, uh, so uh, if, I may, if I may ask you, I may, I may be jumping the gun. Uh, when you talk Indian football, keeping the ball is not something that comes naturally to us. At least that's my assumption. So when you did go about setting your team in that philosophy, did you go about finding players who a first were comfortable on the ball and then everything else followed? Arjun, nineteen seventy six, I represented India for president, for president, and, and, and there and there some Paulo selections. Uh, Brazil had come. And then I was, and then I was, I was just, I was just longing to meet him and talk with, with the little Portuguese I knew. After Brazil, After Brazil and Portugal, Moral is the same. So I went and spoke to the coach. And I asked, and him, I asked him why Brazil, Brazil is famous in keeping the ball. Then he told me, then he just, told me just 60 by 60 40, 40 take a small take ball, a small of, ball of cane and, and try to keep the ball there. Because when you have the ball, have the ball, ball of cane, remember, remember with a bigger, with a bigger ball, ball you're in much, much, much confidence. So that's how, so that's how my, philosophy. my philosophy started. And then the players in Dempo, where, uh, which I played with, uh, Machado, Nicholas, Rosario, Sukur, Putino, Felix Barreto, Nandagar, you see, them, um, Dionisio, uh, Alex Miranda, Babu, these are the ones, you know, really helped me in, in, and when I was young, they always used to say, come on, do this, don't keep the ball unnecessarily, keep it, keep it. So both these things, São Paulo, so selection coach of Brazil and my senior players in Dempo helped me to devise my strategy of keeping the ball possession. And then believe me, like you have said, I also brought players which fitted into my style of play. Yeah. Was that was that easy? Was that a long process? Did it take time? Because it doesn't happen overnight. Oh, it's a long process. Long process. Uh, but I had beautiful players uh, who could really keep the ball. And that made my things very easy. And then I brought every year five. We seem to have some uh, Wi-Fi issues. Uh, hopefully, sir's video gets unfrozen. Uh, yeah. But let me just rephrase. Yeah, yes, sir. Sir, could you could you repeat that? Because we lost you for a bit. Hello. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. We lost you for a bit. If you could kindly repeat that, please. See the senior. I used to bring junior players up under twenty into the senior team every year. Mm. And then make them play along with the seniors to know the philosophy of keeping the ball. And that's yeah. how Mandar, Rao Desai, Romeo, our branches came into the limelight. So, you know, it was a nice, because I believe in the philosophy and everyone appreciated it. Because my style, like you have said, was totally different from other, other, other teams. And, and did you, did you, did you face resistance at the start? Because generally, and I'm, I'm not just football, so anyone who's setting out to do something different, more often than not, you will find a certain sector trying to resist. Uh, did you face that? I at the did start? Have... Uh, it's not that because this was a different style of play. Everybody wanted. And I made them to understand and believe that you have 90 and odd minutes to score a hmm. goal. Whether they score one goal, two goals, or. is victory. You know, just told them to enjoy first how it is. You know, they found it difficult in the beginning. But later on, they themselves came to me and says, it's going yeah. well. Coach, okay. let's follow the same style. And I appreciate it for the players I've done to me. So, so I have to tell you, so I, I, I was lucky enough to spend one year under Savio Sir, Savio Madeira at uh, Salgaonkar. And this was eons of years back. And I was way out of my depth. You know, I was a young kid in Delhi. And I was playing my football in school. So, we all think that in school, mein, if you are playing well, you can play here too. It's a completely different scenario. But I, I love that situation. But because I found out what it actually means to play at the highest level. And mentally, how you have to be switched on for not one month, two months, but for 12 months in a year. But my point being, sir, whenever we were there in practice, the conversation during practice and players warm up would always... Somehow speak about tempos. You know, tempo was doing that. You know, tempo team was doing this. Were you aware of this aura? Because when your peers start talking about your team, that tells you more or less about what you're doing in in I in, only, in Indian. I only came to know when Mr. Subhash Bhumek. Uh, uh, 
सर वे लूजिंग योर कनेक्शन वे लूजिंग योर कनेक्शन वुड इट बी पॉसिबल टू बिकॉज अ लॉट ऑफ योर कनेक्शन इज गेटिंग हंग राइट नाउ it's because calls are coming and i can't do anything uh, arjun so i am <laughs> putting them off i'm sorry uh, no no worry sir no no worry sir uh so could you, could you the, ha ji about this uh, i was happy when i read in one of the dailies that mr subhash bomik wants to implement my ideas not to change uh, to many players and play the ball uh, possession so that is uh, that's the time which made me really feel proud was Subhash Bhai was a great player, great coach. Always admired him. So like that, there are many also uh, players who wanted to come and play in them. Just came to meet me personally and said, "We love the way you you teach these boys to keep up ball and play." So so that really made me happy. Then I go to the stadium and I see one or two players of mine playing either for I League or I S L, and that was the happiest moment for me. So I really feel proud when that I did something which others appreciate. So another thing that used to follow when these tempo conversations used to happen, which used to happen so much, was that Armando Colasso is a great man manager. Could you tell us why people are saying you're a great man manager? I'm not saying you aren't, but when your own admission, how were you that great man manager? Because the thing is, a, a majority of the players in your team, sir, these were solid players, local players. You had a good mix of foreign players. and these were players who were wanted by pretty much all the top clubs in the country arjun everybody everybody can become a coach but to man manage the players is something which god gifted me god gifted me through don bosco high school my teachers who taught me how to carry on with the life my parents my brothers sisters my wife you know see uh, football is a game 11 versus 11 you can't expect everything to be right and to get the best out of them you have to put your hand around the shoulders and say you could have done much better never to criticize or hurt anybody i said you could have done much better and that's what you know renty beto they are really uh, when they are angry i don't know what they do but then i used to tame them down like uh, how circus fellows tame the lion just because i said you are important to the team you are very very important and then they used to just walk away so i had this qualities of of uh, understanding because i played football and i know what it is so <coughs> technically if you play and you coach you understand a lot much much better not that i'm against those who have not played but you understand football much much better where you can put your things into the right perspective uh i'm glad that i was also educated uh and then it helped me you know the word empathy place yourself in other people's shoes because i know many times when i played i also did mistakes and the coaches encouraged me the inspiration for all this to be a good coach came from mr joseph ratnam mm-hmm. who taught me about my former tempo coach late mr joseph ratnam who taught me about discipline mr bob butlin who taught me how to keep the players happy and mr danny mclean and who taught me the finest points in coaching so i'm grateful to all this big coaches who inspired me but then i must be honest to tell you that if i am what i am today if it is not for my friend albert kulasu the president of salset football club and former iff secretary and my other friend agrel mascarenas who had faith and believe in me and brought me to coach salset football club and i So we we've lost you again. Uh, Apologize for that. Uh, I did not let them down. My all this film. I'm sorry. Like you have said, the calls are coming, and then you're. Yeah. Sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. But no, you not know, at all, sir. Not at all, sir. Mr. Albert Kulasso and Mr. Ragnel Mas. Yes, they took me to South. And I'm glad that we won many <coughs> trophies. The best one was the Stafford Cup with my first year of professional coaching. Yeah. Abhi bhi the chal Bangalore one zero, and then many of my players, Roy Barreto, Climax Lawrence, all on the vehicles. They went to play for India. So that that's the appreciation <coughs> and and what I feel. And we were also our first to recognize. So I have to be grateful to Albert Kulasu, Agnel Maskarenes, and Sal Sethu Football Club 
for giving me this privilege and opportunity to start my coaching career. So, of course, sir, to be a good man manager, uh, the communication channel has to be crystal clear. Uh, so, if you could tell me player specific, you were telling me about Beto and Ranti. Say, I talk about someone like a Mahesh Gauli, who for me in the past 20, 30 years has been my favorite Indian player. So, I don't think I have seen any other player close to him. Uh, how would you handle someone like a Mahesh Gauli? Completely different character from a Ranti and Beto, but a character still. So, how would you channel the best out of him if you had to? So, the beauty is when you sit along with them. It's not only coaching on the ground, but off, off the ground. You have to sit with them, talk with them, analyze the situation, make them feel wanted. They are a part and parcel of the team. That was the beauty in me, where I could always go with them, free, play cards with them, have a drink, go for partying with them. You know, I love partying and I love my friends, my coaches, my players to be there. So that, you know, I gave them that sense of wanting, that sense of importance. That's what makes difference, Arman Kulasu, from the other coaches. Absolutely. And the players also love me because of this. Uh, so, sir, uh, if, if I could ask you, so a lot has spoken about, uh, you know, when, when you have huddles before a game and when you're talking, how much does one coach speak? And possibly after a result, where the result hasn't gone in your favor, and the dressing room is a little tense and the atmosphere is a little heavy. What is your way of approaching to these things? Do you not talk at all after a loss? Or do you make sure that you make sure you talk about what happened in those 90 minutes? Or you say, no, come practice and then we will talk about it. Before the game, I always is to speak about our past records. That all can do much better than what. Forget about the past. STD. Now, it's another day. Another week. So just go out, enjoy yourself, express yourself. And at the end of the day, I want you all, everyone to be happy in the dressing room. If something went wrong, I used to tell them during half ten. This is not the way you all should play. You all can play much better than what you all are playing. You all are stars. You see? You all are role models to all the boys who come to the stadium to watch you play. And if you all play like this, what will you do? And then the transformation is to come. And then after the game, even if the worst of things has happened, it happened uh, a few times. Nothing. Pray. Let's go. The next day on the ground, I used to correct them, I used to tell them, I used to even fire them. There are times when, when the employees were not playing the, the normal usual thing. And then mm -hmm. they all accepted and we try to correct ourselves to be uh, much better. You see, these depot teams which I had are a character, strong character. No matter what, they used to bounce back strongly. I mean, everybody has seen. Today, everyone praises FC Goa. Well, I also love Lodero's team. But don't forget, I will, everybody also should love my tempo's past team. I'm here, sir. Number one fan. Right here in front of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> there are so, many, many. Yeah, true. Uh, so, uh, if, if, uh, so, could I could I ask you? Because the thing is, a majority of the people who are watching our chat right now are young coaches. And yes. uh, let, let's, uh, if we can, we, we need more and more coaches in this country and coaches that have their own, of course, mindset and are willing to put their own mindset and values in place as far as their team is concerned. So for them who are watching, what would a normal practice session be like in tempos? Uh, of course, it differs from when your match is happening. So if you're training, say, a, a day before the match, the session is different. If you're training a week before a match, the session is different. But how long would your sessions be? How would you plan for these sessions? My session is 1 hour, 10 or 15 minutes. When Chetri came to watch our practices and he saw and asked me, Coach, is this the way you practice every day? I said, he has fun, loving and joining. And he said, I'm coming to them first. And he came to them first. Yeah. But, uh, and we are proud that we, in spite of uh, we on the road of, of uh, winning the I League, I still let him go. I spoke to my boss, Mr. Dempo, and he said it's going to be a great name, huge name for Dempo's. He won Indian player through Dempo's course and play for a sporting club in Brazil. I'm sorry, in Portugal. Portugal, So yes. that was the beauty. Yeah. That was the beauty. So what is practice? It's fun, enjoyment. Okay. If you put pressure, you lose everything. Now for these aspiring coaches, Arjun, I want to tell them to be patient. It's a long way. If you find me and my other colleagues on this panel, which you call legends, it's because we worked hard for quite a long, long, long time. It's just not a password cloud. 
we work hard and see where we are today your hard work must be appreciated your commitment must be honored so be patient which is you know they win one game and finish the jump and then uh, whether you win or lose i put used to put my head down and walk to the dressing room because i know tomorrow if i ail and boast about winning today what will happen tomorrow by chance something goes wrong so always remain simple and humble do your work with commitment and you'll get the results don't expect anything in return but try to be corrective correct the player at the right time there are many players i've seen who have come from academy i'm not criticizing anybody but then listen at this young age of course now there is grassroots you develop and earlier there were not uh, all these things we work on our own selves all these legends of the past okay they worked on their own they used to go after practice they used to go and work yeah. in the evenings also to get the best out of them but today if you have grassroots you have new development but correct the player at the right time and also make them use both their feet the left feet as well as the right feet communication vision are very important for this young these are the basic which was be taught you see mera go many many coaches i'm not against them many many coaches want to do what the the foreign coaches do yeah okay no grasping power atun if you don't know abc how will you go for for higher uh, education yeah so that technique is very very important then comes the tactical then comes the psychology part of it and then along with this you have to go for the ball winning mentality ball possession creating chances and scoring this is what i believe in you know you do what is the best i did what is the best and i proved to everybody my way of my style my way of coaching my simple methods of coaching really helped me and i am proud yeah to win five i league titles three runners up and two third position is a great achievement honestly to be if i'm not boasting but it's a great achievement and i feel proud that with my simple methods of coaching i did it you which everyone is appreciate so humble and try to learn from the coaches if there everybody has got a scope of learning even today i'm learning i take a pen and a page and i sit whenever i watch this english premier league matches european cup or whatever it is i sit and whenever i find something good right right and keep it for me so you know uh, 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 last few months you said that you know you spend time with your players off the field as well you love going out with them you love partying with them uh, uh, there there will be many coaches out there who say that you should not be interacting with your players once practice done so that that division is there between friend and coach did you sometimes feel that you were crossing over that division did you have to tell yourself that no sometimes because i am the guy who is also the authority who will drop them then maybe i shouldn't uh, maintain that much of a uh... i don't think each coach has their own way own methods of of uh, coaching training and moving around you see i made things very very clear at the beginning i'm your friend i'm not your coach i'm your friend stay within the limitation which i have given you uh-huh. and all the players did that so that was a beauty in me because i made things very very clear i had even drafted rules and regulations so fine when something goes wrong and give that money to the charity so that was something very special i don't think i mean each coach has their own limits but my players could understand me i could understand the players so that mm. was this challenge which really made me one of the most successful coach in indian so so there is the way you take it but you do what is the best for you so i i'll tell you uh, one more from personal experience when i was in goa with savio sir and salgaonkar uh so there was the player i think you'll remember him his name was prashant jaggi and he is a very dear friend from uh, delhi so yeah. the jaggi jaggi all the time i remember used to come to me and tell me he said yaar bhai maine na wo chance miss kar diya armando sir ke sath kaam karne ka maine chance miss kar diya because main unke sath kaam karta na to mera game alag level pe jata it is just i'm just telling you one players uh, what what that one player was saying because he's saying yaar wo player ko samajhte hain because he is of course a delhi boy english is not a strong suit but he's saying wo player ko samajhte hain on a human level aur kabhi kabhi ek human level pe hi chahiye hota hai ki player dusre level pe jaye 
Uh, another one, of course, the comments are coming on Facebook. This is from Mr. Mandar Tamhane, who is with Bengaluru FC right now. He said, had the pleasure of working with him in the national team, always stuck to his philosophy. Top coach, thank you so much for that comment, sir. Sir, but whenever I'm going to talk, talk tactics now, as far as tempo is concerned. And whenever you talk tactics and tempo, I think no conversation would be complete without Mr. Mauricio. And how that partnership the two of you had, given the team you had and, and that, that title winning team, you were always adopting a 4 4 2. Was that your tried and tested way of moving? Yes. Uh, if you recollect, I said that uh, my successes were also due to my coach staff. And Mauricio played an important part. We were the best of friends. When others were not partaking, we too were partaking. We yeah. enjoyed We had discussions about football, nothing else, only about football. And then this helped me. We grew, uh, the bond which uh, grew between two of us was something which uh, none can break it. Even now, we, we, we talk. We, we had discussions, we had different sort of opinions, but we always came to, to a point where we were doing better for the team. Sometimes we had to compromise, sometimes I had to compromise in changing a player or fielding a player. But then we did it for the betterment of the team. And it worked. Sometimes it didn't work. Still, we were fighting when we were drinking. I told you this, I deal with that. But then, remember, the bond grew. Our friendship grew. And we are still the best of friends. So, the philosophy is the same. But the difference of opinions differ. But then, we never let each other and the team down. We always stood by the decision we taken at that right moment. So then, sir, would I be right in saying that you always adopted the 4-4-2 and then, of course, during a game, you would change formation? Was 4-4-2 your starting formation for the team? 4-4-2 for me is the best because you can attack with seven players and defend with, with six players. Or defend, attack with six players and defend with, with seven players. Why? Because you have two strikers, you have four midfielders, there's one wing that moves. Okay? You defend with, with uh, four defenders, four center uh, midfielders and one goalkeeper. So, you have advantage in defending as well as attacking. But then there were times when we were winning and then there was a pressure. I have to change the tactic to 4-5-1 or 5-4-1. So, there are many times we used to change. Okay, But there are many times also we, we, we got hammered because we delayed in taking a decision. We were happy that this player will do but then by putting a we should have put an extra, at a certain time, we should have put an extra defender to protect the pressure which was coming. It, it happened late and then there are many games we have, we have drawn or we, either we have lost. But then tactics is something which uh, depends on the players. You have to try to remove a player because something is not going well or is not playing well. So, or you remove a player because you want to give a chance to other junior players. But having a, a big contingent also is a problem, Arjun. Because uh, tactical wise, when you do try this thing, there are some players when they are removed, they get angry. Yeah. They don't like to be substituted. But then I used to make them understand later on. They said, okay, coach, I just hit all the moment. I lost my cool, so please forgive me. So, but then I used to understand them. Never took many of, even in East Bengal, these things happened. But uh, yeah. I never took too seriously because. When I was a player, I also know when the coach substitute, you have to get angry. But then I know why the coach substitute. Okay, so these are the things. Tactics are very good, but you should have those players and you should also know how to, you know, put at the right moment. Like being a, a successful coach, I've been also a failure sometimes by reacting to the situation very late. Only these things, you know, helps you. Uh, experience, that's why I want to advise these young coaches, experience is very, very important. Maturity, uh, learn uh, from these legends, from these coaches are going to come again, uh, from me also, from other coaches. Because what you want to try in part to all is how we came up in life. Through the simple method, ways of, of coaching, of understanding a player. Don't get angry. What will you get angry? What will you get by getting angry? You see, just put a hand around and say, Baba, you could have done much better. But you fire them, tell them to get a ball, they'll never get it. But you will say, please, please. I remember my boys when the grass was grown and there were stones. We line up. I made them line on a straight, straight horizontal line and said, okay, start. Each one of you collecting those stones and the beads. Because we, the ground are not there for quite a week, one week or so. And then we had to. And they did it. Why they did it? Because I also have part of a of the stones in the ground. 
if i had to stand on a chair and tell them to do it they wouldn't have done it yeah. so they realized that how also was a part of uh, picking up stones and then and they did it and we went home happily and came and practiced beautifully the next day. so there's a, another comment it's coming in from another player who's played under you his name is goramangi singh and he's gone on to earn so many laurels for the country and you you had a very young goramangi in your hand Uh, good to see you, coach. He gave me the platform and the opportunity to be part of a debut team which won the Federation Cup in the I League, 2004 or 5 in my first season in I League. Learned so much and owe him a lot. So, what was the Goramangi you had, and of course the finished product we seeing turning out regularly for India? What was the difference then? A little impatient Goramangi I had then. Always, <laughs> always, always wanted to play, but at this time, he was saying, "When your time comes, you will definitely be a great player. You will play for India." And uh, corrected a little of his thing because he was always, uh, you know, uh, sort of a rushing, rushing, rushing. It just made them to understand. Are you also, you know, all these players I've guided them, but they are the ones who work hard and keep up. In life. I'm just a motivating guiding factor. But they themselves, if I can take a cow to the well, but then remember, the cow, I can't force a cow to drink water. Yeah, the cow, the cow needs to. Drink. So, like this, the players, no matter how much I told them, they themselves work hard. And Gurmang is one of them. And I'm happy and I'm glad that whenever I read Gurmang's name, I really feel proud that he is the one, one of the players who went through. Thank you, Gurmang. <laughs> Appreciate. And and and, and given that uh, Mangi is now gotten into coaching, sir, does it give you double satisfaction that a player not only uh, you know achieves laurels as a player, but then decides to give back to the game? By becoming a coach, and I'm sure he'll take your philosophy into what he's doing now. If we don't turn into coaches, and who will turn, uh, Arjun? We have got better technique by playing football. We understand the technique, so we are in a better position to express ourselves to the players. So I'm happy. Not only Gurmangi, I'm also happy that my Shauli, uh, Clifford Miranda, Vivian. Uh, I don't know if you're aware that I'm also an AFC football instructor. And yes, I can see Lyson and uh, Vivian was the most uh, clever, hmm. you know, methodical. Uh, coach. But you could see that in his game also, so as a player. Right there, you are. I was just about coming to it because he answered so well. He got ninety-four, and immediately I put a remark there that should be sent immediately for Bill Lyson without waiting for one or two years. That was the beauty of Vivian, and I really appreciate. Through his hard work, he's come to such a big level. Every time he, he sees me, he comes running. But then, like I've said, it's his hard work. So, so of the five uh, national league crowns that you won for Dempo, uh, I, I don't. I won't ask you which was the most satisfying, but which was probably the most challenging one, where you probably had to go a little out of your skin to make sure that everything was in tune on a long season. Quite difficult to express this because uh, every every I League was difficult to win and achieve. Nothing came easy. We had to fight day in day out. Uh, each and every point was necessary. Uh, but I'm still. 2004. I think I think it was the first one we won. Mm, that was the first one. First one. So that that really gave me the immense satisfaction. Uh, that, that was really good. Anyway, but uh, apart from what you spoke about, I lead the 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 best part of of is me taking the team for the semi finals of the F C Cup. Yeah, where 2008. I made the yeah where I made the play uh, Indian coaches to understand that we can Indian teams can achieve this success. Okay, so and then everybody had faith, and East Bengal went to Asian Cup, and uh, uh, our Bangalore. FC, they won the so so something uh, which uh, I feel proud that I show the way that it could be done. Yeah, so, but I'm sorry, so, I just went. Uh, no, no, that's okay, sir. So since you brought up AFC Cup, sir, uh, because there is this perception that when the Indian players play a foreign team, mentally we feel like we are inferior to them, and thus we're not able to express ourselves. And if you can't express yourself on the field, then you might be a very good player. You're, you're going to be a little, you know. You're going to be held back a bit. How did you get over that mentality in that 2008 season? Did it take a few games that you saw that the players were holding back, not playing the tempo style of football? No, no, they enjoyed each and every player enjoyed playing the FC Cup. 
they said we have to do something better because I told them, see, you move on I League so many times. Okay? We need to go beyond the I League. Now, it is here where you have to express yourself and try to do much better than what you have done in the I League. And then they started, you know, first year, second year, third year. See, it was beauty. Simple mistake that we lost to that Singapore team. Otherwise, they will have been in the final there. But these things, the mistakes help you to become a, a, a corrective coach for the future. And I've learned from that and tried to. But then, so many teams started coming. They started, all everyone wanted to be Dempo, 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 Dempo. They said they, every team's satisfaction was to only to be Dempo. So, yeah. that, that was it. So I'm happy that uh, I made them to understand that when you start the game, you start with zero, zero. It is you who have to protect your, your goal and then play compact. And then when you have an opportunity, go for counter-attack. And that's how Beto started scoring goals, Renty Beto, on counter-attack. So, we are players. These are beauty. Because of these players, remember, I am something which uh, you are talking to me today because of these players. Great players, beautiful players, who will understand you. And uh, heads up to them. Uh, so, some more comments, of course, coming in. So, I'll keep spraying them in. Uh, this one is coming from Mr. Dinesh Nair, who is a match commissioner. He's saying, one of the great and successful coaches of his time. Nice to see Armando Colasso after a long time. This one is coming in from uh, your former player, Abhijit Mondal. He's saying, he gave me the platform to be a professional player. Lucky enough to work under his guidance. Sir, uh, we've been talking about tempos. If I could take you back to the young coach who got the break from Mr. Colasso at Salsetic. Uh, at that time, was there a certain amount of eagerness that you wanted to prove yourself as a coach? And did you see that coming into your methods? Because sometimes eagerness is not good as well. So did you see that coming in as starting off as a young guy at Salsetti? Right from the beginning, I wanted to become a coach. I decided, I fixed my mind. Even when uh, I was playing for Dempos, I wanted to go oh, my senior, Mr. Sinwal Dempos father. I went to request him to allow me to go and do all these coaches, uh, courses. But then he said, no, you're educated. You have to go to and work at the harbor office. Mm. Uh, uh, I can, I can also work. I can work in any part of the world because I've learned the shipping, import, export. So that's, he said, make you, because I was a graduate, then, go and use your services there once you, no, no, no more football. But then that, I forced it. I left them because I couldn't live without without football. I had a break of four, four or five years, uh, and then all this followed. Okay, because football is everything to me. Uh, Albert Colasso was my friend. I used to live in Kotori. I used to park my bike in Travis office. Hmm. After work, I used to go and sit in an office. We used to chat only about football. And then he said, why don't you come and coach since you want to become a coach? Why don't you come? I'll give you a platform. Well, that's it. I, I can't forget. We've been the best of friends till today. We have do, we do have different opinions. But like uh, Maurice and Albert, we are always together. Can't forget my other friend, Agdel Maskeren, who was a, a, a senior teacher, was to wait for me from my office till I come to have his uh, lunch or dinner. We used to sit together and discuss about football. So these are the things which uh, Arjun are played most important, uh, very important factor in my life. And then later on, Mr. Shinova's temple. So my, I can't forget my family. My wife also, Captain Mindipi, my daughter, who has done business in sports in Lewis University. We talk only about football at home. Nothing. Football, football, football. So this is also one way which helped me to, you know, mold myself into a very successful coach. Am I successful? I think you're more than successful, sir. I think you're a legend. <laughs> How else can I put it? You're putting me on the spot. I got embarrassed there when you asked me. I said, I'm no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so if I could take you to the year 2000, when uh, it wasn't all rosy for Tempo Sports Club. And one of the reasons why you're so loved with what you did with that club is because you didn't inherit a top club. You inherited a club which was in the second division. And from there, you've taken it to the heights that it reached. Could you tell us about that 2000 season? Because you, you qualified for the, for the National League in the second season. That your second attempt. 
could you tell us a bit about that those two years and what it was like coaching a second division team at the time i was a coach of them for sports club in 89 90 and then we won the first uh, scissors cup inaugural inaugural scissors cup with kerala police 1-0 minino fernandes scored the goal then we went to pomis international cup we were runners up there came back to india we that was my 89 90 when i was the coach of them but then they were so playing who played with me and i was training coaching them i felt this was wrong i can't coach or train those players who were playing yeah. with me so i went and told mr villas as a side who was the uh, who was in charge of the team then so please give me a break for a few years he says no 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 you have to carry on i said no there are senior players and there sometimes there are there is a conflict when i tell them this this you know many players eh this one was playing with us how can he train as coaches so out of respect i said no give me a break please i'll come back to them for my life is them coach i played for them for so many years but please give me i will come back so when them coach went down relegated it was mr villa says i say, who went and told mr dempo which is was dempo we got our own play our own uh, player who has become a coach why don't you bring him you will do the necessary things and bring this team up uh at the time also there were rumors uh, rumors arjun that uh, dempos went to to disband the team hmm. yeah but then all the supporters dempo i went and pleaded with mr dempo i said just give me two years i'll bring this team up he uh, said mr dempo said i have no budget i'm going to disband and i said you give me whatever you want you give me 35 lakhs hmm it was 35 lakhs i managed the team and i'm grateful to the senior players kenly pulaso mario suarez francis fernandez lazarus levy marcus k melvin see clifford and so on who who i said let's prove it to everybody that we are not playing here for money but we are playing for the love of football and to bring this great team back into the natural fold okay issues technically so i'll ask you one final question and uh, this is uh, on uh, possibly one of india's finest players right now which is sunil chhetri and because you know uh, he he's garnering so much respect for what he's doing after that uh, what what is your thoughts on sunil especially the sunil you saw at dempo and the sunil you see now doing what he's doing for india and of course bengaluru everybody has got ups and downs sunil chhetri had also down form form is not uh, was in good at that moment the uh, sudil gavaskar always says form is temporary class is permanent you you heard this comment you are in cricket yes. now sunil gavaskar mr <laughs> sunil gavaskar always say this yeah form is temporary yes. but class is permanent okay true sir so many of the clubs didn't want chitri because he was going through a bad patch bad form but then i knew is cunning in the box you know the way you he, he, he converts half chances into into goals is something very you know should be appreciated by everyone and of course he is he, the way he came up he fought uh, to be where he is now fighting dedicated committed is something appreciable i have high respect for him so sunil chitri work on his own he, he he took it as a challenge when clubs in want him but he took it as a challenge on himself when he proved his worth Hats off to him. I appreciate him for what he has done. Proud of him. So there's a. So I've got just got the comment from the good people at AIFC that they've again sorted their technical issues. So yeah. would it be okay if I continue the chat with you a little more? Anything for football, Arjun? And I'm Thank meeting you, you after so long. Go ahead. I know, sir. So long, sir. Absolutely, Last so long. Chat. I'll take a few questions that have come in, sir, by young coaches because I think this is the most helpful session for them when they can hear people like you been there, done that. This one's coming from Godwin Rodriguez. He's saying, "My question for coach: Can you give advice to coaches who don't have professional or academy football playing experience, as the goal is to manage at the elite level?" So, so he's saying, hey, "Yes, sir. Yes, sir." What he's saying, what I should give. my advice to him yeah okay try to learn 
if he's not a professional coach, if he's not done any licenses and all, try to read, try to imitate somebody, go and see somebody how he works, how he trains, try to do it. There's a difference between professional coaching and amateur coaching. Now for him, in the academy or something where he wants to do train the young, it's it's simple coaching. Technique, how to do things, how to pass, how to shoot, get there, then go for coach education, go for this FC. C license, D, D license, C license, B license, A license. And then if he's very much keen, to go for professional license. So I advise him to be calm and cool. You can also be a much better coach than me. But be patient. Try to learn the correct ways of methods of coaching. Don't worry. Don't give up. You can also be a coach. Maybe if I'm dead and gone, maybe after so many years, Arjun Pandit, if he's alive, he will also host with you. He will also be talking like <laughs> me as a legend. So don't be patient, Baba, and try to learn. Try to learn from the coaches. Go and see whenever team practices, big team practices, this academy team practices. Try to learn from them. See how they do. And this will help you in your, in your long coaching career. So I have to ask you about that move to East Bengal. Because as a player... You know, as a player, you always want to play at least a season, two seasons, or at least a part of your career you want to play in Kolkata, whether it's for East Bengal, whether it's for Mohan Bagan. At some point of time, it was Mohammedan Sporting as well. As a coach, what made you take up that challenge? And how different was it from an environment where you have someone like a Mr. Srinivas Dempo who is sitting in the background, always letting you do what your job is, and then to go there, where was it completely different? It was totally different. You are a king in your own house. So you must also go out there and see what, what are the expectations, exploitation, the circumstances, and what you can be there. In your house, you are a king. I took it as a challenge. I also, I'll be very honest. I also needed you know, this exposure outside my own court because uh, many of them said, ah, them Paul, because they were great players and, and he was successful. So I took it as a challenge. Today I want to tell you, everywhere I went, I, I, I won trophies. Every club I coach, I won trophies. Okay? In Calcutta, the team was down. I took it as a challenge, the team was down in the seventh position. I brought them up to the runners up position. Yeah. One mistake we did against Churchill Brothers at Patota and that still there. Okay? okay? Gurmangi, um, sorry, uh, my friend from Punjab, that defender can't get his name, lost his school and he hit somebody and then he was shown the red card, he had to play with 10 men and that's how it is. But that's life, you can't do anything. Uh, can't do anything, but uh, I took it as a challenge and I'm glad that then they signed the second year. They're doing very well. Three matches, one draw, one loss, one was just the beginning, but then something untoward happened and then I have to come back. You know what it is, and I don't want to discuss because I have high respect for these Bengal officials also. Because uh, they give me the opportunity. No matter how great coach you are, remember the platform you require. But I went there and I know we won the two two Calcutta leagues there. So that is my does. Uh, I never lost it, Mohan Magan. Hmm. When I was a coach of his Bengal, so so that that's that's nice. These things, you know. People try to bring into my hey, you, reporters they phone me, my friends. You never lost a single match, so so something nice to cherish with. So for someone who's of course coached uh, top players in Goa, who's coached top players in Kolkata, uh, would you say there's a difference in uh, not personality, but is there a difference in mentality of the Goan player as opposed to Kolkata player? And I'm not saying uh, I'm not asking something critical, but I'm just saying are they different in their approach to the game? I want to be honest. It's mecca of Indian football. No matter what, they want to win. They want to win the Calcutta Fellows. And they have groupism in Calcutta. They have, uh, the agent have players there. Okay. So, by, see, like I've said, I had beautiful uh, uh, a group of players who could understand, even I have to make them sit down. A few, one or two who couldn't believe or understand that he was substituted or something like that. But, I had players who could understand, but they, there it was different. They want to win, their player has to be there inside. But I do not uh, put uh, 
see all these things there, but I could see that something wrong was happening because mm. the players whom I took with the Indian team, the team want to try to you know have something like coach is not fielding me and what is this, 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 this. coach doesn't know to coach, you know. If coach doesn't know to coach, then how did coach win uh, so many trophies and how did coach uh, produce so many players who went to become, who went to become the captains of the country? Yeah. So people should think twice before they speak. So the mentality in Calcutta is totally different. Different. They want to win, 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 no matter what and how. Okay, so I had problems there, but then. The best way, like you said, forget about it. There are good memories and the bad memories. If 90% have been successful, why should I talk about the 10% negative thing? Fair enough. Fair enough. So, so uh, just before we just last few questions, there's a comment that's coming from Mr. Noshad Musa. I think you know him very well. Uh, was lucky to be with coach for three years in Churchill Brothers, where I was assisting. Danny McLean had a lot of success with the club. He was more like a friend. Now, also when we meet, he is full of humble advice, great personality, thanking him for his guidance. So, if I could just get to present day football, what do you make about this influx of foreign coaches? And uh, if you know, the other day someone was asking me this conversation who are the Indian coaches you like? I said, Where are the Indian coaches coaching for me to like them? That's my point. Very what good. do you make of this entire thing, sir? Because I don't see Indian coaches around. License, hum kar rahe hai, hai. But once you have the license, if you're going back to an academy, then that's a little detrimental. Arjun, somebody will, will not be uh, uh, listening to this and they will not like it what I talk. But I, I'll be very honest with this. How many of the ISL clubs or I League clubs would like to have an Indian coach? How many of them believe that Indian coach can do? Give me a team. I'll have my supporting staff. Don't pay me anything, and see the team, and then you, you you pay me. But how many, how many, how many of the Indian franchises are ready to sacrifice this? Now there are so many Indian coaches. I'm glad that Sanjay Sen put a put a, a letter forward to to all India Football Federation. They are all doing for the development of football, bringing in foreign coaches. But when you bring in foreign coaches, at least take three or four foreign coaches in that franchise. Don't pay them much, but at least let them get that experience. Yeah. Let them follow what is good. There are many coaches who come because they like to follow the same pattern that they follow in the European countries or to other countries. But where our level of, of that is not good. Let me be honest, uh, Arjun. What is the grasping power? What are, are we taught the basics properly? Hmm. I mean, no, we are not taught the basics properly. And then become the problem to run off the ball, come and support. You see, decision making is our worst thing. But then we learn. We learn. I'm still a student. I also want to learn. But I want to request uh, ISL, uh, the management, whoever they are, take three or four for, for foreign co uh, Indian coaches and give them that, that uh, in order that you know, they learn from the foreign coaches and try to implement it to our Indian boys and also they try to become good coaches where one day our Indian coach will look after the Indian national team because yep. we understand the culture. What do we eat? What do we eat? What is our strength? You can't carry on going into the, in, in, into the uh, gym and doing all those things and your body cannot uh, lift up. We need good food. We need good nutrition. Okay. We need body strength. Drug by you see. Here you find a little happy hour. Oh, you become fat. You cannot run and all. But the strength, as long as your feet age, doesn't matter. As long as your feet, it's more important. Anyway, I want to request ISL class. Please take Indian coaches. Let them get the experience from the foreign coaches. So in turn, they relay to the to the Indian players. And then and one finally, like I've said. That's my dream, an Indian coach leading the Indian national team for a long time. So my final question to you is this, uh, since we're talking about coaches and since one of you're one of the finest to grace the game in this country, uh, you've already spoken about your appreciation for Bibiano. So if you could avoid Bibiano, are there any other Indian coaches who have caught your eye and you feel they have a long, uh, bright future ahead of them? And if so, what in their style of coaching has really attracted you to liking them? The Derek, 
I like Derek, but Derek has to change certain ways. Okay, has to be calm and cool. Couldn't. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Derek. I'm not trying to offend or anything. If you're listening, has to be calm and cool. There's not no need to give commentary to other match. What to do? Do do this this. Be calm and cool. You are one of the best coaches of India. I want you to go ahead. Then Clifford is coming up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I've seen another coach, junior coaches. Mm, can't recollect, but there are many Jan, coaches. There, there's a 26 year old, sir, Yan Law, who's doing uh, really well with Minerva. Very good. Very good. You see, this coach should be encouraged by own own people. You know, like Vivian, give them the platform, let them do it. Now, about Vivian, also, see, he was training this boy. He should be sent along with the boys because, yeah. remember, if he's not sent along with the boys, another coach will come and, and, and start with different types of coaches. I mean, the style of coaching. Vivian understand this boy, so he also should be promoted like that. You said Vivian not to talk about Vivian, but I'm just giving an example how yes, it sir. should be. Okay? If he, that, uh, from Coach from Minerva, uh, uh, all the best to all these Indian coaches uh, who can do. But we must should have faith. We all of us must should have faith in Indian coaches. Okay, Sanjay Sen, I appreciate that he wants to follow that I'm inspiration. He also won an uh, uh, I League uh, with with uh, Mohan Bagan. So these are the things. Given opportunity, I'm not saying, but given opportunity to be an assistant coaches and then like now Kali Jamil also, mm. uh, Derek, there are other coaches who have done. Clifford Miranda is a, a, a bit raw. It'll take time for him. But uh, give these people a chance. Let's see what happens. Because all these foreign coaches also have not won trophies all the time. They have and they're changing, they, they're, cha they're changing them every year or two, sir. So how does one implement a philosophy? How okay. can? This is the reason why when the IFF offered me a one-year contract, I said no. In one-year contract, you can only build the team. You yeah. need two or three years to, you know, and a coach should be judged on two, three years, not one year or two years. And three years, I think it's uh, well sufficient to understand. Okay, Armando, sir, thank you so much for your time, sir. Uh, I apologize if I took it a little longer, but once again, I think there's so many comments coming in on Facebook and uh, for everyone who's, of course, watching this, uh, if you haven't seen this, then do go on AIFC's Facebook page and uh, make sure to see the chat again because these are precious words that have come in. I think if I could, what I could take away from your uh, style, sir, is that it's not complicated. It's a very simple style and that you have to come into touch with your human level as well. And you need to make sure your players understand that you had that human level while assessing them and while, of course, appreciating them and taking them to another level. Armando, sir, once again, thank you so much for your time. And please, please do tell us what you're up to nowadays, sir, so that, of course, uh, people who are watching will know what you're up to nowadays. So I was the technical director of the Football Academy. So now, because of uh, pandemic, hmm. I don't know what's going to be the future. So let's mm -hmm. see. Because unless and until the boys come, uh, nothing can be done in the academy. So, hoping with hopes that I may continue there. Even if so then, I'm not made continue, I, I will be an advisor. I will come and chat again. Definitely, sir. More, more than happy. Always. Okay, I think we've uh, again encountered a few issues. But I think that's the end of the chat. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this chat. Just for everyone who's course joined us on Facebook, uh, just telling you, sir, sorry, sorry for that. Aap kuch bol rahe the beech mein. No, 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 no. I just let's see what happens. I can't leave without football. Anything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, sir, once again. So guys, just a reminder, every Wednesday and every Saturday on uh, AIFC's Facebook page, we're going to be chatting to these legends. Today was episode one with the one and only Armando Colasso. We have six more uh, to come your way and six real high profile coaches who've been there, done that in Indian football. Armando, sir, once again, thank you so much for your time and hopefully we'll chat again pretty soon.